Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. As usual, my name is Spencer, and as usual, you can find this show on all the podcast platforms, including Patreon, another podcast platform called Patreon. Uh, You can watch the video. $5 a month or higher gets you video of this show. And it's, it really just takes it to a whole other dimension. I think it's the sixth dimension. Uh, let's just talk about the words. Let's, what, what, what do we got to talk about? The words, that's what we have to talk about. Forever and ever, day after day, we're talking about the words. Uh, let's see. The first word in this episode is electronic publishing. Two words. Noun from 1977. This is publishing in which information is distributed by means of a computer network or is produced in a format for use with a computer. Publishing stuff with the electronics. Oh, what's the sound effect going to be? zip a doop doop The next word is electronics. Noun from 1910. Number one, so the, the word itself is plural, uh, but number one says singular in construction. I think that's what this this is abbreviated down to. Um, so electronic. Normally it's electronics. Here maybe it's electronic. It is a branch of physics that deals with the emission, behavior, and effects of electrons and with electronic devices. And uh, examples of where the electrons are used are in electron tubes and transistors. So the emission of electrons, sending them out, uh, how they behave, how things are affected by these electrons and the effect onto the electrons, and then also just electronic devices. Number two is electronic components, devices, or equipment. Oh, those are all the electronics. I have so many electronics around me right now. I've got a computer and monitors and this camera and this audio recorder and the, the, the microphone itself and the keyboard and the mouse and this, this thing over there and that thing and that thing over there and those things and lights and all the electronics. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it for electronics. It's just all the stuff. Uh, this is the silliest show, uh, but I'm glad that you're here. If you're here, I'm glad that you're here. Electron micrograph. This is two words. Micrograph. Would you just say micrograph? Micrograph. It's a very tiny little thing. No, this is a noun from 1934. A micrograph made with an electron microscope. Um, what is a micrograph? Where we can't skip ahead. Um, it's probably very small because an electron microscope is dealing with a very, very tiny. I think it can look at things uh, like you need an electron microscope to look at. I don't know those little water bearer things or uh, just atoms in general uh, the little bit the, the tiniest of the little things and then you can make a micrograph with that uh, electron microscope and it's called an electron micrograph I don't know what it is electron micrography electron micrography is a noun it's the uh, the art of making the micrograph, the study of it, the, the, the whole world around making micrographs with electron microscopes. Oh, what's an electron microscope I just heard you say? Zip, 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 zip. It is a noun from 1932. An electron optical instrument in which a beam of electrons is used to produce, to produce an, alar- an enlarged image of a minute object it's the things are so tiny they need to shoot out a beam of electrons to help look at these i still don't understand how people figured out how to do this i just feel so stupid compared to these smarty people uh let's see that that's what we, we can learn from them um 
it produces an enlarged image, a bigger image than real life from something that's very tall, tall, small. Uh, it's a minute object. Electron microscopist, microscopist, that is a noun. That is the person using the electron microscope, I guess. And then electron microscopy. Why do we have to change the emphasis? I mean, it sounds right to our ears in English, but it seems like you, you add a syllable and then you got to change the emphasis of the syllables. And not everybody knows to do that. Microscopy. That's what you would want to say. Electron microscope. Electron microscopy. Noun. That is that mic electron microscopy. That is a noun. Electron multiplier. Two words. Noun from 1936. A device utilizing secondary emission of electrons for amplifying a current of electrons. Utilize, utilizes a secondary emission of electrons to amplify the original current of electrons. You multiply... I don't understand how that works. Maybe when you got more than one current of electrons going, they the, the, the sum is greater than the parts. Uh, or the sum... Some, one of those things... What do they say? I don't know. It's a multiplier. Why would you need to uh, amplify the electrons? I don't know. For science. For science. Just for science. Electron optics is next. Noun from 1916. This is a branch of physics in which the principles of optics are applied to beams of electrons. We're just going to apply these these uh, principles of optics onto uh, this beam of, le of electrons. So optics, you know, oh, maybe we put this beam of electrons through a prism and see how it's affected through a lens, through a thing. I don't know, uh, what are the other things that you do with optics? You look at stuff. So it's uh, something about the visuals of how, I don't know, yeah, it's, it's, it's related to optics, I don't know, lenses, that's what I think of. Electron optical, well, that's two words with a hyphen. Electron optical, that is an adjective. So something that is uh, related to electron optics would be electron optical. I don't know, I don't have a lot of things to say about these words because I just don't understand it. Zip, 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 zip. Electron probe. Two words, noun from 1962. This is a microscope that uses an electron beam to induce X-ray emissions in a sample. Uh, it's a, a micro... Oh, you know what? I think I said it's a microscope. No, it's a microprobe. A microprobe that uses an electron beam. It goes... Shoots the electrons out of this microprobe and it induces X-ray emissions in a sample. How does it do that? We'll never know. Electron transport, two words, noun from 1951. This is the sequential transfer of electrons, especially by cytochromes in cellular respiration from an oxidizable substrate to molecular oxi oxygen by a series of oxidation reduction reactions. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything, but it's transporting uh, electrons. They're being transferred sequentially by cytochromes. In cellular respiration, so that is that when the cells are breathing, the cells are are just living their best lives. From an oxidizable substrate to molecular oxygen by a series of oxidation reduction reactions. Something about oxygen. I don't know what this sound effect is. <laughs> Electron tube. Two words. Noun from 1922. Electron tube in 1922. An electronic device in which conduction by electrons 
takes place through a vacuum or a gaseous medium with a sealed glass or metal container and which has various uses based on the controlled flow of electrons. You definitely, you definitely want to control your flow of electrons. Uh, and it has various uses. It's, again, I don't know any of this stuff. I think that if you are fascinated by this idea of electrons and how to use them in things and science, you got to go study it. Go to school to study electrons. Don't rely on this podcast to give your education. You got to go, you got to go past this and go, go, go learning somewhere by somebody. Electron volt. This looks to be like our last electron word. Yeah, but obviously we got more electric related words. Electron volt. Two words. Noun from 1930. A unit of energy equal to the energy gained by an electron in passing from a point of low potential to a point one volt higher in potential. And then it shows the numbers, uh, the, the joule, the J-O-U-L-E. That's the measurement of this, uh, the measurement of this volt, I guess. It's, what is it? What is a joule? Let's just do a quick little thing. It's a measurement of power in some way. What is a joule? Let's be real specific in what we're talking about. Uh, a unit of energy. Yes, a unit of energy. So, the amount of joules, uh, well, I mean, it says right there at the beginning of the definition, it's a unit of energy. How many joules are by this, uh, how much energy is gained by an electron? It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So, I think basically what that means is you take that decimal point and you move it to the left of the 1.6. 19 spaces, which means you've got point, I think this is the right number, point zero 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 one six joule. It's a tiny, a very small joule. It's not even a carrot. It's a totally different thing. I apologize if I confused you. A jewel and a jewel and a carrot, they're not as different things. That sound I made is that's that's that amount of jewel. The next word is electrochilography. Electro mm, I missed a symbol. It's electrochilography. Oculography, yeah. It starts with electro. And then we have the word O-C-U-L-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. Oculography. Electrooculography. Noun from 1951. This is the preparation and study of, what is this word? Electrooculograms. Oh, boy. That's actually the previous word. Let's talk about that first. Electro electrooculogram noun from 1947 a record see i think the reason that i skipped was because i saw the complicated word and then when i looked back from the camera i saw the similar a similar complicated word and i just jumped right to that one electrooculogram a record of the difference in electrical charge between the front and back of the eye that is correlated with the eyeball movement, like in REM sleep, and obtained by electrodes placed on the skin near the eye. Okay, so we can see right in the middle of the word there is oculo, and that's related to the eyes. So it's a record of the difference in electrical charge between the front and the back of the eye. So when your eye is moving, uh, specifically when you're sleeping, you're in REM sleep because your eye is moving a lot, this this thing, the this uh, well, the elect electrooculograph probably um, is the the sensors that you're gonna put around the eye, and it's gonna record the difference between the electrical charge from the front of the eye to the back of the eye. Uh, 
What purpose would you, what is, what is the point of this? Why do you need to know the difference in electrical charge? Is it to say like, oh, uh, well, you know, this part's working a lot harder than this part. It's, you know, it helps to see like what's going on with the eyes to help something medically, I guess. And then, so the record, the recording of that electrical difference is the electrooculogram. And how do you do this with zip, 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 zip? electrooculography? 1951 noun. It's the one I started to read before. The preparation and study of electrooculograms. I already read all that, but I needed to. I need to go in order. Maybe, maybe when you grow up, you'll be. An electrooculographist. I'm gonna guess that that's a real word. Electro optical. Two words with a hyphen. You could also just say electro optic. This is an adjective from 1879. One of or relating to electro optics. Two a. Relating to or being. A change in the refractive index of a material due to an electric field, as in electro-optical effect. Yeah, it's something about, yeah, refracting. So that's when you're like maybe using lenses or mirrors or something. It's going to like bounce it off or something. It's, uh, yeah, well, we're going to learn more about electro-optics shortly. But first, we have to finish up electro-optical to be... Using or being a material that exhibits electro-optical properties, as in an electro-optical crystal. So that crystal is electro-optical, but why? Well, the, I mean, the first thing I can think of is that you can maybe shoot electrons into the crystal, and then you can see maybe how they bounce around inside and then how they refract out. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what this is used for. Three, relating to or being an electronic device for emitting, modulating, transmitting, or sensing light. Electronic device that emits light. Electronic device that emits light. It modulates light. It changes light. It transmits light. How is that different from emit? Emit, transmit. Maybe emitting is just it comes from this, that's the source and it comes out. And then transmit says it's taking it from one area and then sending it out to another area. Um, or senses, it just senses light. Hmm. Electro-optically is an adverb. There is no etymology. Nope, because we know, we, we all know electro and optics. We know all the etymology for those. Zoo, Electro-optics is next. Two words with a hyphen. Noun from circa 1889, which is 10 years after electro-optical. Number one, this one I guess would be singular, electro-optic. A branch of physics that deals with the effects of an electric field on light traversing it. So that's what all this optical stuff is. It's all about light and how what and how what deals with the effects of an electric field on light. How does a field of electricity affect the light that's going near it, through it, under it, over it, around it? Those are the different ways. Uh, yeah, sounds interesting. How, how can you affect light by using an electric field? And I'm sure that there are uh, scientific uses for that, clearly. Um, is it all just for fun? No, no, it's not just for fun. It's for science. Number two, electro-optical devices are electro-optics. The last word is electro-osmosis. Electro-osmosis. E-L-E-C-T-R-O-O-S-M-O-S-I-S. E L E C T R O O S M O S I S. That's how you spell electroosmosis. Noun from 1906. The movement of a liquid out of or through a porous material or a biological membrane under the influence of an electrical 
field or just electric field. Okay, so this is about the liquid out or through the porous material, the biological membrane, under the... So it's about how the liquid goes through a thing. That's the osmosis. Maybe it's a sponge or like a skin. I don't know. How, to, how is it going through it? But also, uh, there's an electric field. So how does the electric field maybe change the properties of the liquid or the properties of this porous material? How does all that stuff happen? Why does it happen? Something like that. Electroosmotic is an adjective. Nope, don't understand that either. Let's reread all these words that I don't understand anything about. Electronic publishing, electronics, electron micrograph, electron microscope, electron multiplier, electron optics, electron probe, electron transport, electron tube, electron volt, Electrooculogram, electrooculography, electrooptical, electrooptics, and electroosmosis. Hmm. I mean, I, I think I might. I might just want to pick electrooculography as the word of the episode. Um, because it's just a fun word, and it's an interesting, uh, an interesting science to study the difference in electrical charge between the front and the back of the eye and I think that's amazing I really want to try to do better on my songs you know when I'm at home I just say a funny a, a, I say a phrase and then I start to sing it like last night it was like it's time for dinner we're getting ready to eat the dinner it was different words it was food time something about food and I just sing a little thing about food but I want to 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 be more singy or something let's just do a better job why because 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 we want to make things better so electrooculography i mean it already sounds very rhythmic when you say it like that electrooculography 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 that's all you need to do that was that was fantastic Everything's fantastic. Everything is fantastic. I'm going to talk to you about another movie that I watched, which is Persona from 1966. We watched this on Criterion, and I had never seen it before and knew basically nothing about it. And I am shocked that they didn't show this to me in film school. Um, I don't really want to say much about it, but I think it's a fascinating movie, and everybody should watch it. And there's a lot to think about, a lot of layers. You, you can discuss this for a long time, and I think people have. Um, and then, actually, there were some special features. We started watching some of the special features on Criterion, which is one of the best parts. And uh, it, it, added, it added to my appreciation of the movie, and I already appreciated it a whole very much lot. Uh, there's a movie theater in my town, and it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but there was one side of the movie theater that had this like bar and bistro and there was this huge, huge tall wall and they had, I don't know, 15 or 20 movie posters on this wall. Gigantic. Most of them were huge posters. Um, and a lot of them were like sort of artistic or they were like foreign versions of posters and they were just really beautiful. And I spent a lot of time looking at this wall and uh, I've never seen that movie, never seen that movie, never seen that movie. And Persona was one of the movies on there. So I'm slowly cl checking off the movies that are on that were on that big wall of, of movie posters. And I got a ways to go, but that was one of them. And uh, I'm glad that I watched it. And I suggest that you do too, you beautiful, amazing, smart, funny people. That's the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening and possibly watching. To me, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye!